if he were to visit Gifford, an idyllic village with a population of less than 800 people in the rural coast of East Lothian, you would be forgiven for not knowing that only two and a half kilometres away lies a site with a sordid and reportedly supernatural past. Today, only accessible via a hike through the woods and fields, across glen and stream, hidden amongst the trees, lies the infamous Yester Castle. The exact date the castle was erected is unknown, a secret that has been lost through the ages. It is, however, known that the original keep of the castle was built before the mid-13th century, with the site being reinforced and turned into a fully functional battle-ready castle in time for the Scottish Wars of Independence. The castle played an important role in the war between Scotland and England, serving as an outpost for both sides. In the years the castle was occupied by the English, the site served as a vital outpost between Northumberland and the central belt of Scotland, allowing the English a place to bring supplies, recuperate and rest before marching further north or heading south back to England. While occupied by the Scots, it served as a stronghold to prevent the English marching further north. The second Lord of Yester, John Hay, followed King James IV south to fight in the Battle of Flodden in 1513, the largest battle that would take place between the two British nations. Both Lord John Hay and King James IV would lose their lives on the battlefield, subsequently making King James IV the last British monarch to die in battle. The castle would go on to change hands from Scots back to the English towards the end of the 1540s. It was the last castle in the region of East Lothian to surrender to English rule. The Eighth Lord of Yester, Earl of Gifford and Marquis of Tweeddale, also John Hay, began to work on Yester House, a large mansion and estate less than half a mile from the site of the castle in the early 1700s. Opening in 1715, this estate would take over from the castle. Over the years, the castle fell into disrepair, with much of the stone being quarried for use in the nearby village of Gifford. Only ruins of the castle remain, hidden in the woods from those unaware of its existence. The only structure that remains intact is the subterranean room known as the Goblin Hall. Perhaps even more interesting than the role this site played during the Wars of Independence is the hidden history within, boasting tales of warlocks, goblins, and even the devil himself. Sir Hugo de Gifford the first Lord of Yester, and grandfather to the first John Hay, was an educated man who was said to have enjoyed science and dabbling in alchemy. Rumours of his power and ability spread, and soon he earned himself the monocle, the Wizard of Yester. Many believe, even to this day, that Sir Hugo was a powerful warlock and necromancer, wielding power over the living and the dead alike. Within the subterranean area of the castle, the wizard was said to have practiced his sorcery. Legend has it that it was due to the wizard's supernatural powers that the castle even exists today. Hugo was said to have made a pact with the devil himself, having summoned the devil into the underground chamber that would one day become the Goblin Hall. What Sir Hugo exchanged with the devil is unclear. But this Faustian bargain granted Sir Hugo the ability to summon and control an army from the depths of hell, an army of goblins. It was said that this army of goblins constructed Yester Castle under the watchful eye of Sir Hugo, the Wizard of Yester. Sir Hugo's sorcery extended further than forcing an army of hellspawn to do his bidding. When Sir Hugo's daughter Margaret was to marry, he gave her husband-to-be, Brynn of Colston, a hand-picked pair. This pair came with the instruction that should anything happen to the fruit, it would spell disaster, not only for Brynn of Colston, but for the entire Brynn family. This warning was taken so seriously that Brynn of Colston had the pair encased in a silver box and kept under lock and key and under the supervision of armed guard. 
the brooms prospered. Days passed, then weeks, then months, and then years. A few hundred years to be exact. When, in 1692, on the night of her wedding, the baronet of Nova Scotia and the fiancé of Sir George Brune decided to remove the pair from its silver case. The fruit was reported to have looked as fresh as the day it had been picked. The baronet couldn't resist taking a bite. Once the pear had been tasted, it turned hard as rock in the baronet's hand. The family's luck turned. Sir George amassed a great debt and had to hand over the estate to his brother Robert, who, along with his sons, died in a flash flood soon after. By 1718, the family was ruined, and Sir George died with no male heirs to carry his name. The pear with its bite mark is still at Coulston House to this day, an estate just outside the town of Harrington, a reminder of the century-spanning power of the Wizard of Yester, Sir Hugo de Gifford. It may be no surprise then that Sir Hugo may himself have escaped death, with some documents claiming that the wizard met his end in 1267. However, state papers of King Edward I, dated January 1279, claim that Sir Hugo de Gifford was still alive and well, twelve years after his supposed demise. Perhaps, for the wizard, death was only a mere moment in his journey. A clerk could tell what years have flown, since Alexander filled her throne. Third monarch of that warlike name, and eke the time when here he came, to seek Sir Hugo then our lord, a braver never drew a sword, a wiser never at the hour, of midnight spoke the word of power, the same whom ancient records call, the founder of the Goblin Hall, Sir Walter Scott, Marmion, A Tale of Flood and Field, 1808. You can still walk the remains of the castle today, and a hidden tunnel at the rear of the hill will allow you entrance to the Goblin Hall itself in which you can practically feel the remnants of ancient magic. Many residents of Gifford still claim to this day that the castle is haunted, with most of the reported ghostly activity occurring in the underground chamber. At the rear of this hall, you will find a passage that goes deep into the ground. Fallen rocks and debris prevent the depths of this passage from being explored. Some claim that the stairway once led to another subterranean hall, Others say it led to a well deep within the hill, but others believe Sir Hugo used this stair to venture to the depths of hell and converse with Satan himself. Who knows, maybe if a wizard powerful enough would return to Yester Castle, they could summon the slumbering goblin army, and Yester Castle could reclaim its former glory. But until then, this has been finding folklore. Like... Subscribe for more and let me know in the comments if you have been brave enough to walk the goblin halls and what tales I should cover next time. Until then, may the devil walk behind you. Bye for now.